All right, Jim, thank you very much for coming and sitting down with us today. Um, I'd like to ask you first about this question of parity pricing. At the Schiller Institute conference, uh, one of the graphics you had showed what the farmers uh, get for the product versus mm -hmm. what they're actually marketed for. And one thing that you brought up there was that um, if if there wasn't a farm bill passed and we reverted back to the old lives, we would see essentially the hidden hyperinflation, which is in food because we're not paying the farmers, That's would correct. come to the surface because we would be obliged to have the parity pricing. Right. So if you could go into a little bit of, of what parity pricing, the well, principle of it actually. The, the principle of parity was, was originally back in 2000 or 1904 and 1907 with a time frame in life where agriculture and industry was on the same playing field. In other words, you, ha you, you have the same labor pools from both sides of things. Uh, you, you could buy a farm for, say, $1,000, and you could buy a, 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 a factory or, or a business for $1,000. Within that, you can make a living with that set of inputs and purchase price, and also you would, get, you would retain a, a, a percentage of, of value for, on return of that investment. Let, let, let's put it in simple terms today. If, if you've got a job yeah. and, and you invest your money in the stock market and you expect a 10 to 15 percent, hopefully, mm -hmm. on a good year from the stock market, and we all, we all cheer when the stock market goes up, yeah. and we all cheer when the, when the, when the grain and the, the commodity markets go down. But, but mm -hmm. the, 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 the thought process is when you put dollars in, you want to return on those dollars where it be a savings account, a a you know, stock market, whatever, and so the the thought is when if you get a ten or fifteen percent return, you did better in that investment. You would be just putting the money in the bank. So therefore, if if you got a job, you're doing well, and you've got that, you're you're somewhat in parity, and and that that is kind of what my interpretation of, of parity is. If if I've got uh, a million dollar farm, mm -hmm. and it takes about on the average about two hundred acres now to get there, so it doesn't require a really big farm to have that kind of input. Mm -hmm. I will expect, you know, if I get a 10% return rate, I expect to get maybe $100,000 back for that plus a salary. Yeah. That doesn't happen in agriculture. You may get, you may get a, a little bit of a wage on your return, with, and, but as far as what you've got ownership, that, none of that comes back at all because there's just not enough money in the, in the pot to make it happen. The, the illustration that we had on, on the, the farmer's share of, of the dollar and I think it was 15.8 cents or something, and I'm cheating from him mm -hmm. here, but mm -hmm. to give an example, uh, there was eight or ten of us went to lunch yesterday. Mm -hmm. and, and for that many people, the gratuity for the, for the waiter is 18%. Mm -hmm. So the waiter, and I'm not putting people down to do that for a job, but for the time they had invested in us and for the money they had invested in that, they got 18% for their services. Mm -hmm. And the farmer did, didn't get the 18%, huh. for, but 15.8% for their services. And they purchased the ground. They had all the risk in raising the crop. Mm -hmm. They had all the input costs of fertilizer. Which are going and, up. And which is going up. Mm -hmm. And they had the inputs of labor. And they got less than 15, just a little over 15% of the picture of what folks pay for food. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that analysis, it's lopsided. Right, right. So. If you want, if you expect folks to, to, you know, to flourish and to be able to, to meet their overhead obligations, things like that, we've got to get breach that gap a little bit and give them a little better, fair share of the pie, so to speak. Yeah. So that's my interpretation. of What's going on? You know, we there was one there was one picture on that about potatoes, and and there was a five pounds of potatoes. I, I don't remember the price, but let's just say, let just say four dollars. Mm. And it showed that the farmer got 40 cents. Now, I don't know if that was per pound or if that was for the five pounds. Right. But the, 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 the gap between a finished product and somebody putting that finished product on a shelf, you know, was only, was only 10 percent of the picture in that, in that analysis. And that just doesn't equate to a fair, to a fair you know, contract of any, any main shape or form. The other illustration we talked about, and we talked about parity coming into play and why we have a farm bill. The farm bill was was introduced to cushion and parity. You know, when I was growing up, uh, my father told me one time, said, "You know, the government has two fears with that, with people on the farm. They're they're terrified we're going to go broke, hmm. but they're equally terrified we're going to make a dollar." Hmm. So you know, the old, there's a song at one time, "How you gonna keep them down on the farm?" Well, there's there's some degree of of 
thought process there by, by the government, you know, how are we going to keep these folks on the farm, or a certain group of folks? So when it, when it come out of the parity and, and at, right after World War II, and, and for whatever reason, um, Farm Bill came into play, and, and, and at that time, those Farm Bills were, if, if we need to, we need to manage how much product we're going to produce so we can guarantee some degree of fair price. We want to make sure we have enough food for our folks. But farmers are notorious for overproducing. We will follow the dollar. We're not like anyone else. So if I have a certain commodity that I can raise that will make me more money than some other commodity, I will pour everything I've got towards that commodity. And so will all my neighbors. Right. And so therefore we have an overabundance of that one issue and it drives the price down. So how do we balance those out? And in, in, in the 50s and 60s, most of, most of the, and even up through the 80s, most of the the government programs in agriculture were designed to guarantee a floor, but also guarantee a ceiling in production. So we had to set aside a certain amount of ground uh -huh. to, to ensure we would not overproduce, because we had the ability to think technology was in place, ground was fertile at that time, uh -huh. and, and it, was, it was really moving along. Now, what's happened since then? Right. Population exploded. We, you know, we're going, we went from turn of century one billion, now we're, now we're at seven, uh -huh. and, and the speaker before me yesterday talks about 2040, and we're going to have 11 billion 11 people. Billion, yeah. uh, it's putting the pressure on us, folks. You know, as far in, in agriculture, can we meet that challenge? Yes. Can we do it on our system we have now? No. Right. And for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's 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 all speculatory. Um, we talk about sequestration of two percent, what the government has imposed because of reduction we're trying to get off, off the deficit, and people are just going nuts. Right. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, and from perspective story issue, my corn is worth about $7.35 today because of how much we got. Mm -hmm. The speculators are, expect, are, are projecting next fall for that to be $5.60. Mm -hmm. That's 27% reduction for me. Um, if you look at the original intention of, for example, crop insurance, um, it was to ensure that there was food that in the original bills out of the 30s under the Roosevelt administration, it wasn't just in monetary terms, but you would actually set aside bales of wheat. And you would use that as the basis for, for the crop insurance to, number one, make sure that the farmer could stay in business and they would have a product to be able to, to, to sell in the event of a downturn. Mm -hmm. But more yeah. importantly, to guarantee that we had enough to eat. Now it's all monetary based. So if you could maybe address. Well, we you're, you're correct. Um, Back, back when, when, when you know, and let's go back when, when the banking regulations were different than they are today. Uh, even in the in the 90s, uh, going up to that point prior to letting the letting the um, grill out of, out of the cage or whatever you want to mm -hmm. paraphrase that, um, the swings in my market would be very small. Maybe see 30 right. cents, and now I can see as much as five dollars. And when when they when they adopted that and allowed people to start getting in, in in that speculatory thing, and because they were trying to figure out, well, how do we help agri and that that particular administration? Figure out how do we help agriculture? How we how we energize these folks? How we get these prices up where people can afford to do things? Well, let's let everybody try to make some money on it. Mm -hmm. And that was the thought process. Now, was that correct? No. Uh, I made an analysis yesterday that I, I was one of those fellows too that thought I could I could make a few bucks on the side by speculating. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife told me if, you know, if I lost 20000 I was out. And I said, I'll honor, your, I'll honor that, but it won't happen. And six months later, I was out. <laughs> so it's something you just can't, because it's not, most folks look at that like, well, it's a supply and demand market. You know, it, it's based on if we've got too much, it's going down. If we don't mm -hmm. have enough, it's going up. Mm -hmm. and there's other factions involved there. And, and people are behind the scenes are playing big players. And it takes four or five of those big players to make that thing move one direction or another. Mm. But getting back to have we made a mistake, yes we have. Um, we, we've changed over the years. Uh, we've looked at things from, from a monetary perspective and not from a, from a food value perspective. And we've looked at things like what is it we want out of life and, and you know people want they don't want to spend 30 or 40 percent of their income for food, and, and and I understand that. How do we get that? How do we get to the point where it works for everyone? Uh, it's 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 difficult. Um, I wish I had an answer for you, but but Glass Steagall's probably a starting point. 
Yeah, because right then, when you when you put Glass-Steagall in and you cancel all of these obligations, it's going to take a big load off of it, it everything. Is. Now you asked the question a while ago when that when 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 we seen the clip from from some of our congressional leaders talking about that and, and, yeah. and admitting that look, you know, we made some mistakes and things. And you you scratch your head, said, so, well, why can't why can't these folks just vote it out? Makes sense. They admit it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But the problem we have, and you can go back, and we can you know, let's go back to Reagan and move forward. The people that are behind the scenes, whether it's the feds or whoever, I mean, there's there's probably 50 to 100 people that are in control all the time, mm -hmm. and control each administration, from what I can see. Mm -hmm. This is my opinion. Now it's nothing, you know, just my opinion. Sure. But as long as those folks are in control, I don't care who we put in office. We've got the best politicians money can buy. Hmm. And with that being said, therein lies part of the problem. And we, we, we talk about financial, you know, um, campaign financing and those kinds of things, but yet whenever we try to shut the door here, no one opens and it opens wider and, and, and it gets worse even. Hmm. So I think somewhere down the road, we've got to figure on how are we going to establish a society that is based on for the people, hmm. of the people. And the WAPA would bring a lot of things to folks. Uh, it would bring a sense of, of that we've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. But most of those things that we encounter, and the reason we're so difficult, as a nation, we react. We're not really mm -hmm. interested in proact. Mm -hmm. um, even agriculture, I react to whatever somebody does to me. You know, they, they, if they send me a new variety of corn, if they send me this or send me that, you know, something, I'm going to react to what happens. Yeah, you brought up during the conference, you brought up the difference between kind of reacting to the markets, what the markets will offer as a price versus saying, hey, yeah. this is how much it costs us to That's, produce well, this. Well, and, and, and you bring a good point there. And, and when and the people will tell us all the time, say, you guys farmers aren't very good aren't very good in marketing. You really ought to be, today, when, when you know next year corn is going to be worth more than what's going to cost you to put it out, lock it in. Hmm. That's not a bad idea, except... Last year, I had to pay back to that India I locked in $38,000 because I didn't have the crop to sell them, and the market went beyond where I locked it in. Right. And so now I owe them $2 a bushel, rather them owe me 5 right. Yeah. Well, I want to turn to um, Indiana, your state, is uh, in the Ohio River watershed and also mm -hmm. on the Great Lakes. And um, there's a huge backlog of overdue upgrading on the locks and dams for the riverway as a whole. We're also seeing this with the Mississippi. Um, and, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers has looked at the waterways um, at the different locks and dams, and it's, it's basically failing. Like, it, that any of these, uh, many of these uh, uh, installations could have a catastrophic failure at any time. Because earlier you brought up the need for, for Nawapa, so I'm wondering if you could maybe say something. Well, back in 77, and I'm, I'm getting old enough now, I can go back and talk about things happening. We had a... Uh, in my area, in Ohio Valley, we had a record snowfall, a couple of feet actually. Hmm. Uh, the temperature that, uh, that winter has got cold enough where the Ohio actually froze over. Now that, that's a rarity, but but it did freeze over that year. And and uh, I was uh, w actually we were out, out uh, moving snow from the from the county roads. That's something farmers we just got the equipment, so we kind of think that's our job to move out to the state highway, and so we'll take care of those things. And, and a neighbor come along and said, uh, Markland Dam, which is right south of me, and it's one of the dams in the Ohio Basin, had uh, just been uh, um, mowed out, so to speak, or just had just mm -hmm. broken because the ice jam took it out, mm -hmm. which was false. But but there, there was so much ice coming over top of that thing that people thought the dam was gone. And, you know, if, if we lose one of them things, we, we lost a lot. I mean, you, you, you take in the fact that they're, they're there for watersheds, they're there for transportation, they're there for flooding, and and it, it is a problem. And if you know they they need upgraded, um, there's just a lot of infrastructure that we need to happen to make those things. And even for the next next generation of of, of transportation, it's just you know things get bigger. People need bigger barges. Now. The lots need right. to be enlarged. Uh, um, we need to have them so they, they can take a whole barge rather than just take one part of it at a time. You know, it takes maybe take a whole day to get one through a lock. So some of those things need to be streamlined, and, and where we get the money from, or, or the time, or, or the the political clout to make that happen, is critical. Uh, so, 
you know, we, we talked a bit yesterday about pumping out of out of the uh, Missouri River in, into other water basins, and um, you know I, they're talking now uh, um, in North Dakota they're, they're already expecting floods, and, and they, I'm sure the Missouri River is going to flood this spring, and mm -hmm. and some of those the idea the thought process behind that that we would drain those off in, in preparation of a flood. Well, recreation come into play. Right, and recreation demanded that we re, we retain these pools, but for our for our entertainment. Well, that's not what they were designed for. Right. So, so we go back to to, to you know the legislature. Why can't we have these things done? And and we go back to the fact that those guys want to get reelected. And when they go home, their 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 base that they they are elected from has different ideas. You know what what's in it for me? We not want not what's in it for the world. What's in it for me? And when we have these hundred-year events, then it's too late. And the next generation says, "Well, why? Why did we do it this way? Or why can't we accomplish something else?" And so it's a vision for us. And I think I think it's the we start by going back to basics and sitting down and having a chat about it and how can we figure out what to do with it and who's behind it and what's what's stopping us from achieving this. Hmm. Well, you say. Uh you bring up this question of the of the political clout, the you know essentially the will to to to, to do what's necessary. For example, you know we've been fighting uh, fighting like hell for Glass Steagall. We now have I think I believe it's 13 states which have some kind of activity. South mm -hmm. Dakota has passed a, a resolution. Hawaii has introduced one just recently. Uh, what would you say to our listeners in terms of of you know fighting for? Well, fighting for Glass Steagall on a state basis. Uh, is is a bit unique and um, where you know if you're fighting for it from a rural perspective you're uphill battle because we don't have the representation as I indicated yesterday and that to to meet those needs regardless of what's going on mm -hmm. from from a uh, perspective of growth and, and borrowing a building those kind of things uh, you just talk to the legislature and say look you know we've we've experienced something in the last few years We've seen our banks, you know, basically gamble their way in, in, into uh, um, bankruptcy. And how can we prevent this from happening to our state? How can we help? And we think this is a means of doing this. And uh, can our state legislatures see their way clear to to at least take a look at that and have a discussion about it? And if, if we make sense to you, let's put it on paper and make it happen. Hmm. Do you have any uh, any final thoughts? You know, I, I, I talked earlier to a young lady, and, and, and I wanted to tell the all you folks that, you know, you can do anything you want in this world. We, we have a God gift to go as far as we want to go. We can, we can reach any star we want to reach. Uh, we, can, we can do all the things that, that we want to achieve. And, and people will let us do that. They're going to let, they're going to let me talk as long as I want to talk, and, 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 and as well as anyone else. And, as long as we don't do two things. As long as I don't take a monetary value for what I do or any credit for my accomplishments, people will let me and anyone else go as far as we want to go. And that's the first thing we have to do. We're, we're interested in selling glass to go or Nuwapa, the things that really are important to people in life. We put first a project and a second, and we can achieve that. Thank you very much for your Thank time, you. Jim. I appreciate it.